right, so uh, we've got the, got the engine running, and I'll fill you in on all those details shortly. And the good news is we're reading good we're reading oil pressure. RPMs are jumping around a little bit, but I'm waiting for the uh, oil temperature to come up. And as soon as I get some good oil temperature, then we'll, uh, we'll be able to put a little more throttle to it. So. So right now I'm just waiting for it to uh, warm up, and now I'm going to hop in the plane. Alright, so this is what we're reading so far. The uh, RPMs are jumping around a bit, so I'm not sure that's the greatest method uh, to use. Uh, it's kind of between 900 and 1100 that it jumps a little bit. Uh, CHTs, EGTs look good. Uh, of course, we're just basically idling. Oil temperature finally came up to 105. We're looking for an operating range of uh, around uh, 160. So it's good to see the oil temperature finally started moving. And the oil pressure is sitting right at 50. So so far, so good. Alright, so this is our third run of the break-in, and uh, we still got some uh, good temperature here. I've just got it a little bit off idle just so it can warm up a little bit more. And uh, then we'll get, uh, I'll get the secondary turned on. That smooths her out a little bit when you get the secondary on. Pressure was going a little bit over 70. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't push it any further, but I'm going to wait till it warms up a little bit more and then we'll try again here. Alright, so I finished out that third run and um, all, the, uh, all the temperatures were like really good. Uh, at max RPM, actually anything over 20, 20 to 2300 uh, oil pressure is running about 71 so my warning light was coming on because um, it was uh, I've got the range at like 23 to 70 and I'm kind of running like 30 to 71 um, so that uh, I'll have to ask, uh, ask Scott about that what the margin is on that uh, oil pressure other than that, after the third third run, um, she started a lot easier on the third one, uh, only on the uh, only on the second flip. So before that, it was quite a few. And I think what I was doing was I was using the choke and and uh, probably flooding it out. So with the uh, fuel pump, I'm getting plenty of fuel delivery to the carb. So I probably don't want to use the choke except maybe when it's cool out or something. So, but. Uh, everything is uh, everything's looking good. I checked out the engine area that time. The one the one thing that I have is that the guys at MGL what they asked me to do was to take the wire off the P lead um, for the RPMs and actually put the put the wire wrap seven or eight wraps of wire around the spark plug wire and then connect to that. That's what I did, and um, I'm getting RPM readings but they're just all over the place i mean it'll it'll go like it'll go 36 27 so i really don't know 
what it's actually reading. So uh, I want to go back to the P lead, but the thing we have to do if we go back to the P lead is we've got to figure out what resistor I need to put uh, between the P lead and the instrument um, because we need some kind of a resistor in that line so we don't blow up the, uh, the MGL here. So, all right, so uh, I was going to talk you through kind of some of the things that I did, and I'll be right back. So one of the things I was concerned about starting it this time around was uh, I wanted to ensure that uh, that I wasn't going to have any issues uh, with knowing that I've got fuel flow since since we were showing zero PSI before, and I really thought we were dealing with an instrument problem. Um, now I did two things at once, so. Uh, but I think this the first thing I did probably is what made the difference. But I also think getting the right. Uh, this is a VD, VDO. Um, uh, let's see, it's a five bar uh, VDO gauge, and it. Uh, I'll grab the, in case somebody else is interested in the future, I'll get the model number of uh, what I purchased because uh, uh, that's actually working really well. So, And I didn't actually have to have that secondary ground wire soldered to it. Uh, it had continuity to the ground, so that worked out really good. So what Scott said for me to do before I went in, if I needed to go into the fuel pump or the oil pump, which, which uh, I, I was prepared to do if necessary, uh, what you do is you go in there and you you put grease in there and <clears throat> that creates a suction so that as soon as you crank it over it um, it immediately starts to draw oil because it creates that suction but he asked me to pull this plug right here and there's a plunger in there that goes up and down and he told me to look and see if that plunger might be stuck and sure enough uh, when I took that when I took that out, that plunger was stuck in the middle. And so if that's the case, you go under here and you remove this screw and there's a really strong spring in there. So the fact that it was stuck uh, was really, I found that to be really interesting because it really shouldn't have been um, based on the pressure of the spring. But then once I got it out, it had some uh, scratches on it. And at first I thought maybe the burrs were on the little machined piece itself. But actually, what was happening was there was a burr inside this uh, in this hole, so I had to take a dowel with some some uh, fine sandpaper on it and go in there and and work that burr out. And then the plunger, because when I took the pin, the spring out, the plunger wouldn't come down. So I had to take a screwdriver and actually push it uh, down so that it would drop out. And uh, but once I got that smoothed out just a little bit. Uh, and I could see that the plunger was going to move up and down easily because I would push it to the top and move the screwdriver and it would drop down. Uh, so we have a combination of that that we took care of and this, and I'm guessing it was a little of both. I think we were getting no reading because of the sender, and I think we were possibly not moving oil, which I'm grateful that the sender wasn't working because it made me shut the engine off. Um, to then discover that this was probably the problem all along. One of the problems, but at any rate, those three ones rank great. So uh, that problem is taken care of. And this wrapping around here, it's a solution, but it's not the solution. So I'm waiting on the guy from MGL to call me back so I can find out what kind of resistor I need to put between the P lead right here and uh, it'll go, it'll connect basically where this is. Uh, it'll connect here, and then, and then this, the wire here will connect back to the P-lead so that that resistor is in the middle. Okay. So just a uh, short video today, uh, but I wanted to uh, show you what, what I was working on and uh, how things were uh, progressing along. And I believe, uh, once I get this tack sorted out, where, I, where it's not jumping around and I can actually read it, I believe I'm going to be ready to uh, uh, start doing a little bit of taxing. So, hope you're all doing well. I'll catch you later.